Hi there, I'm David Bush, I'm back, and this is topic 10.3, the territorial expansion of the United States. The 10 is the topic, the 3 is the video, so the three videos, and this is a series of questions on the territorial expansion. They are college board questions, and I'm going to go through them with you so you can see how we kind of put these things together. Let's take a look. The Texas uprising against Mexico was characterized by just take a look and see if you can figure it out. Was the alliance between Americans and Tejanos, the hostility between Irish and Spanish Catholics, American adventurers and soldiers of fortune, or the Mexican alliance with the Comanche against the Americans? Give you a couple of seconds. The correct answer is A, the alliance between Americans and Tejanos. Tejanos were people who had settled in the Texas area that bordered with Mexico and had developed a unique culture with Mexicans and Indians that were living there. So it was a kind of a hybrid culture, a cultural mixing and blending, if you want. They were called Peñanos. Number two, by 1848, the United States had gained all the following territories except, remember, we're talking about 1848. Take a look, see what you come up with. We're going to go with Alaska. We do not get Alaska until 1867, part of Seward's folly, as it's going to come to be known. Let's go further. All right. So now, number three, the Lewis and Clark expedition was financed by, was it the federal government, the personal fortune of Thomas Jefferson, subscriptions from land speculators, or fur traders? Think about it a second. It's the federal government. And this was part of the debate about the uh, Louisiana Purchase. Thomas Jefferson was a minimalist as far as government went. It was a huge expense, a huge amount of money. Remember, he had to use the Elastic Clause, Article 1, Section 8, Number 18. And that was where he got the power to um, authorize Congress to spend money to buy Louisiana. Let's take a look at Number 4. Americans justified their restless expansion in all the following ways, it says it is, that should be in all the following ways, except Americans have a God-given right to bring the benefits of American democracy to others. I think they use that. The nation's prosperity depended on expansion. It was America's duty to Christianize the Indians, or Canada and Mexico should belong to the United States. Think about it a second. If you got D, you are correct. Canada, North, Mexico, South, they weren't interested in going North and South. They were more interested in going East to West. Number five, while challenged by other historians, popular opinion supports the view of frontiers. Frontier historian Frederick Jackson Turner, who argued that settling new frontiers, hmm, take a look at that one. Frederick Jackson Turner was a late uh, 19th century historian, and he wrote about the American West. What do you think it might be? Shaped Americans into a uniquely optimistic democratic people, effectively got rid of the Indian problem, was good for the environment, economic development, natural resource, or was America's fate, according to our manifest destiny, to describe it? And we go with number five. Shaped Americans into a uniquely optimistic democratic people. Let's take a look at number six. Which of the following was not a major cause of death on the overland trails? I had grown up to think that it was Indians as a major cause of death. Strangely enough, the Indians tried to avoid contact with the white people, so it is Indians. They were not a major cause of death on the overland trails. Number seven, the United States gained the Oregon Territory south of the 49th parallel by... So how would we have done it? Remember, this was all part of 54 40 fight. We didn't get the 54 40 but this was the treaty with Great Britain. Let's keep going. In the early 19th century, these Indian tribes dominated the southern high plains. If you remember the discussion about the Mexican War and why the, why the Mexican government asked Americans to come in and was so happy to give them this land in Texas, should Harken back and give you an idea. And at C, the Comanches and the Apaches, the Americans going into Texas served as a human shield, is really what happened. Let's take a look at number nine. 
The Mexican government invited the settlement into Texas because, take a look, they didn't want to create a buffer zone, it could make huge profits, it wanted to create a buffer against the Americans, or it wanted to create a multicultural society. I think multicultural societies really hadn't come into being yet. It is A, it wanted to create a buffer zone between it and the Comanches. So the settlers in Texas were basically a human shield. Go to number 10. Stephen F. Austin and his hand-picked fellow colonists in Texas agreed to Mexican terms that they, let's see, several all ties to the United States, bring no slaves into Mexican territory, accept the Catholic faith, and irrigate the land on which they settled. Stephen F. Austin and his hand-picked fellow colonists in Texas agreed. Essentially, they agreed to accept the Catholic faith. Even though they didn't practice it, they figured that will go along with it. They'll leave us alone. How are they going to know? And strangely enough, it's interesting the whole Alamo, the Alamo is a mission, it's a Christian mission, how they, the whole dispute kind of comes to a head there. Number 12, all of the following reasons why Texas rebelled against the Mexican government, except, take a look, why would they have rebelled? Would they rebel because the government outlawed slavery? Would they have rebelled because the Mexicans began raising the price of land? Would they have rebelled because the government began to restrict American immigration? Or would they have rebelled because the government began to levy customs and duties? If you got B, you're right. The Mexican government began raising the price of land. They didn't raise the price of land. They didn't allow anyone else to settle on it. The land had been distributed and no one else was going to be allowed to settle on it because they feared too much influence from the United States and the people settling in the land. 13. The Republic of Texas was not immediately annexed by the United States largely because of... Remember, there were a series of presidents who debated this. And let's see what we have here. Was it because the fact that Texas would have to be admitted as a slave state? The opposition of Stephen F. Austin? Fear that there are too many outlaws residing in the Republic or the isolationist policies of the Democratic Party. And it was, A, the fact that Texas would have to be admitted as a slave state according to the Missouri Compromise. 14. The Liberty Party showing in the 1844 erection was the first political sign of the growing strength of, and don't be misled by the underlining of Teyanos, that's simply because uh, Microsoft Word did not recognize it. So the growing strength of, Italianos, anti-Spanish settlement, free African Americans, or anti-slavery opinion. And it is the anti-slavery opinion. The Liberty Party was, the Liberty Party ultimately evolved into, with a lot of steps in between, the Republican Party, um, put together basically with outlawing, with the idea of outlawing slavery. Fifteen, during the Mexican War, Northern Whigs began to characterize the war as Hmm. Would it be an unwinnable conflict, a racist plot against a racist plot against the weaker nation, part of a southern conspiracy to expand slavery, or a Mexican scheme disputed to claim disputed gold fields on the Colorado River? C. Part of a southern conspiracy to expand slavery. And you know what? They were probably right. Let's take a look. All right. So that is a quick look at questions relating to the topic, and I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to have some fancy editing to do because uh, a couple of things occurred up here that you're never going to see in terms of glitches with the computer. But nevertheless, this is topic 10, the territorial expansion of the United States. Three videos. First one is an introduction of what it's all about. Second one is a PowerPoint, and third one is this question and answer. Keep the emails coming. The email numbers are growing. I'm answering every one of them. And remember, if you want more information on this, you want to go on my website. All this stuff is there. The website is www.bushhistory.net. E. One H in Bush History, so it's B-U-S-C-H-I-S-T-O-R-Y. So for now, have a great day, and next topic will be topic 11, and it'll be all about the 1850s and the steps leading to the Civil War. See you soon.